I thought we'd have a look at how we cut and join copper pipe. So um, slightly different practices between HVAC or air conditioning and plumbing. We use a tube cutter or a few different types of tube cutters that you can adjust to cater for multiple sizes. So we don't have one tube cutter per size of pipe. We have one tube cutter that accommodates for all different sizes of pipe. So what we'll do, we'll cut open some pipe and then we'll have a look at how we join that pipe back together again. So you basically insert the pipe into the cutter and then you'll twist until your cutter wheel touches your pipe and then we're going to start turning. After a few turns you can tighten the handle again that will squeeze that blade that little bit tighter. Keep turning and then eventually that copper will now be cut in half. Once we've cut the pipe if you have a look inside the pipe, you'll probably be able to make out there's a burr um, from where that cutting wheel's dug into the pipe. So before we join the pipe, you want to get yourself a reaming tool or some form of deburring tool. And if we scrape around that pipe, we basically want to get rid of the burrs from within that pipe. Just so the refrigerant can flow smoothly. So we're going to do that on both pipes make sure you clean out any of the burrs don't leave them in the pipe because um, otherwise they'll get collected around the system once you've deburred the pipe this is um, semi-hard or hard drawn pipe so in order to join this together we need to expand one side of the pipe so for that we use a tube expanding tool now, because this is hard or semi-hard pipe, first of all, we need to anneal that pipe. Um, so we're just going to heat up the end of the pipe. I'm not going to go too mad. Um, so we've, we've heated up the end of the pipe. Now, if you don't know, this is a tube expander and you'll probably be able to see there, look, that cone coming in and out. Now, if we pick the correct size head for that pipe, so that is a half inch head, we'll basically screw that onto the tube expander and then you can see that opening and closing. So essentially, once that's in the end of the tube, that is going to open that tube up, give you a cup and then you'll be able to push the other bit of tube into the cup. So what we'll do, we'll put that in there, look, you can see that fits in there and then you'll squeeze down on the handles just until you can't squeeze anymore. And then if you release that, you should be able to just about make out that you've got a nice, a nice cup form there. Um, if I'll pick up more of the piece of pipe, I'm hoping that now this will fit in there snug. It probably needed another squeeze in reality, so you might find you have to give that a couple of squeezes to get that in. So you also might want to move that pipe around just a little bit. Give it another squeeze and then hopefully that will fit in there a little bit better. So there you go. That's expanding copper and that is the method we use to join two pieces of copper together. And now we've done that, you're then able to braise, um, braise that joint. So we're just going to use some map gas and a turbo torch. Um, we've got some We've got some Lawton's brazing rod that we're going to use. Now, under normal circumstances, we'd flow nitrogen through this pipe to stop any oxidisation on the inside of the pipe. We're not going to do that today just for demonstration purposes, but if you were out in the field, like I say, you would flow some nitrogen through that pipe, stop any oxidisation. But 
we are going to have a look at this and this is heat shield from JVAC so if you've never seen this before it's essentially a substitute for a wet rag so if you want to stop the heat from um, traveling to perhaps important components or whatever you can basically get yourself some of this now it's almost like a, a wet sort of putty and you will basically wrap that around your pipe and that will stop as much of the heat traveling past that, that bit of pipe um, as it usually would. So we're just gonna put some of that at either end just for demonstration purposes. We'll put some on that side. We'll get our goggles on, we'll get our, we'll get our map gas and we'll get ready to, to brace this up together. So we're going to turn on our, our map gas, our turbo torch. Um, we're going to apply some heat to this pipe. Just before it sort of gets cherry red, we're going to apply some, some brazing rod. We're going to fill that, fill that cup um, and then hopefully we'll have a nice solid joint. <laughs> So as you can see, we've now braised that joint together. Under normal circumstances, or let's just say if you were outside, slightly larger pipe, you would use oxyacetylene welding equipment to, to braise that together. It's a much quicker process. It's quicker to heat up the pipe, so it doesn't take as long. On smaller size pipe, and, and perhaps indoors, you can get away with using map gas and a turbo torch. But as you can see there, We've now joined that pipe together, so hopefully that will withstand a pressure test and that provide a leak-free joint. 